Hey everybody, John Schumacher here along with my partner Michael Bloom. Welcome to Health Jams Episode 6, Why YouTube is a Must for Your Business. And today we're going to be chatting with video marketing expert Lou Borton, who has worked with a number of online stars in this arena. And we're going to be doing a deep dive into why YouTube is so powerful, why video in general is so powerful for your business these days. Uh, as many of you know, YouTube is the number two search engine in the world next to Google, and Google owns YouTube, so Google definitely gives preferences to YouTube. So this is going to be an important discussion for you to, to get the ball rolling on your video production and how you can leverage YouTube and video in your business. So that's our discussion for today. Uh, Michael, what you got for us? Sure. Well, it's uh, great to be here with you again, John, and uh, hello, everyone, and I'm so excited to have Lou on the show with us. I was telling him when we were in the green room before we got started live that I've been a fan and an admirer of his work for a while, so it's an honor and a privilege to have Lou joining us tonight. So just for some of you who may be joining us for the first time, and perhaps this is your first live Google Hangout on Air experience, just to let you know that sometimes funky things happen with technology. So if uh, your screen freezes or your sound goes away, 99.9% .9 of the time you can solve that issue just by refreshing your browser. But if something happens on our end and we go off screen, we will do as best we can to come back on as soon as possible. So just want to let you know about that. At any time during the Lou's presentation and our discussion, you can feel free to type your questions into the chat. We'd love it if you just say hi and type into the chat and maybe let us know where you're, where you're uh, coming from tonight, just to let us know you can hear us fine, see us fine. And uh, we're going to get going about, after Lou is done with some of the great uh, information that he's going to share and then take some questions, he has an awesome freebie that he's going to give away tonight that we're going to share. So we're going to make sure you get that too, about 30 minutes in. And then we will take your questions for up to an hour. So I'm so excited about this show tonight. Uh, John, take it back, and let's get rolling. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Michael. So, so yeah, let's just jump into it. Today, our guest is Lou Bartone, who is a video marketing expert. He's worked with Fox, NBC, E! Entertainment. Uh, I believe he's known as the, online, or the video star for the online stars. Uh, he's worked with Ali, let's see, all kinds of people, Ali Brown, Michael Port. Marie Smith. So he's the guy's a rock star when it comes to video and YouTube, and so we're excited to have him on here uh, to drop some knowledge bombs for us this evening. Uh, Lou, thank you so much. Uh, let's just start off, have you share a little bit about you personally with our audience, and then uh, I know you have a, a presentation for us where you're going to do some deep dives into some awesome content this evening, so take it away, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it, and thanks again for having me on. It's uh, it's great to be with you guys. I love what you're doing, and uh, yeah, keep it going. So um, I like to tell people, you know, I had a really glamorous uh, career in the TV and radio industry. Uh, I was actually doing a, a presentation for somebody, and they're like, well, what was your first job in, in radio? And I tell them, I had to dress up. This is a true story. I had to dress up as a pickle in a parade for some sponsor, like Daily Pickles or something. So I started my career in a pickle costume, so <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It, it really is that glamorous. Um, so yeah, and I worked in the TV business for quite a while, and I've been doing the online video stuff since pretty much around the same time as, as YouTube, seven or eight years or so. It's hard to imagine a world without YouTube now since it's become so uh, ubiquitous, but I do want to share some uh, tidbits about YouTube, some uh, tips and just ways so that you can use this huge resource, which is a free resource, and use it to uh, get more business, more visibility, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. So if you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll share my screen and, and jump into that. Sounds great. All right, let's uh, test out the old Google technology and see if it decides to <laughs> do what it's supposed to do. So. <laughs> You should now, um, I believe, be able to see my screen. There we it is. Looks oh, good. wow. I love it when things actually work. So, <laughs> so like I say, you want, I want to talk to you guys about getting the most from this uh, monster mega site. As John mentioned, uh, YouTube has become an enormous site on the web, a very influential site. Uh, it's a great way to get visibility. Uh, it's a great way to become a, a YouTube celebrity, I guess. It's also really a great way to share information and to promote and market your business. So you guys feel free to stop me at any point um, with questions or just to uh, chime in. 
otherwise, I'll kind of be off and running, and, and I'll just kind of go through this. Does that sound okay? Yeah, we'll jump in if we hear anything from the audience or we have a question. I certainly awesome. probably will jump in. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, I call YouTube sort of a must-have resource, so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, this evening about setting up a YouTube channel, what it is, why you should have one. Um, I'll show you a few ways to customize and brand your channel. Uh, I'll talk about uploading videos because some folks, uh, you know, I mean, you can't really have a YouTube presence without uploading videos. And I'll also talk a little bit about YouTube optimization, what that means, how to do it. Um, I know some of this stuff sounds techy, but the truth is it really isn't all that techy, although YouTube does like to keep us guessing. Um, when it comes right down to it, it's, uh, you know, there's really only a few things you need to know about YouTube to use it and to maximize its features. So I wanted to throw out a few um, kind of impressive statistics for you then just to, to kind of underline the fact uh, that YouTube has really become a force to be reckoned with. They've got a billion unique users every month. Um, six billion hours of video are watched each month on YouTube. I, I think of that as, you know, some of that's probably wasted time, but, but hopefully some of it's not wasted. Uh, but that's an hour for every person in the world. A hundred hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. Uh, and the majority of the traffic from YouTube actually comes from outside of the U.S. So um, the other thing that's interesting about YouTube, because I came from the TV industry and we all talked about ratings and I worked at a cable network, e-entertainment television, and uh, we always talked about this really important demographic of adults 18 to 34. Well now YouTube reaches more US adults ages 18 to 34 than any cable network. So uh, it's an amazing resource. It's um, still amazing to me that it's, it's free and you can you know, put videos up there and really promote yourself to the world. Um, so I wanted to kind of give you a lay, the lay of the land, if that's okay, because a lot of folks, when they go to YouTube, they're like, oh my god, there's too many things to look at. Where do I go first? And it is a bit busy, but on the YouTube channel, whenever you go into YouTube and you open a YouTube account, you'll always find the upload button uh, on the upper right, so you can click that and upload videos. Um, you can customize the look of your channel uh, by adding your own um, graphic or artwork. It's very easy to do that. Um, you can add, you know, whatever your brand may be or your logo, you can add that to your YouTube channel. Everything in the kind of Google world is interconnected. So your YouTube account connects to your Google Plus account uh, and to Gmail, and it's all pretty well integrated. Um, the other thing that's interesting about YouTube is now when you go to somebody's channel, they give you the opportunity to do a, a trailer or basically a welcome video on YouTube. So when somebody comes to my channel who hasn't subscribed, they can see a video that I select and that I place there that, that sort of acts as a welcome video. Uh, so this is a great opportunity and a great space to use to basically welcome people coming to your YouTube channel for the first time. And once they have subscribed to your channel, um, at that point, they will see another video. They won't see the welcome video. So they won't see the same video every time. Uh, once they subscribe, they'll see another video. Uh, you can also organize your videos via playlists, and this is good as you start to get a lot of videos on YouTube. You might want to have uh, a playlist of tips and a playlist of your webinars. You know, whatever you do in business, you can curate that content and make it easier for your viewers to find what they're looking for by putting your videos into playlists. Lou, is there a way? Lou, is there a way to make the uh, the trailer video? Uh, it comes up automatically, right, for those who haven't subscribed yet. Is that correct? Yes. So it, is that what's recommended, or do you recommend that it be they have to click on it? Is there a way to do that? Oh, no, it doesn't autoplay. Oh, it doesn't? They still have to click it, um, which is good, because if you're at the office or something, you don't want it to just kind of start blaring. Um, but that's the video. You select the video that you want to use as your trailer or your welcome video. Okay. And then once someone has subscribed to your channel, if they decide to subscribe, then they'll get a, um, a when they come back, they'll say what to watch next. And it would probably be uh, the default is like basically your most recent video. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so YouTube is always changing, the, but fortunately the upload uh, doesn't seem to change very often. So when you go to upload a video, there are actually several ways to get a video on YouTube. You can drag a file, a video file from your desktop, or you can select a file to upload from your, desk, from your uh, computer. You can actually record directly from your webcam to YouTube. Uh, you can create a photo montage. You can launch a Hangout from YouTube. Um, so there are a bunch of ways to actually get videos on YouTube. And they've also got a, a video editor. A lot of folks miss this, but you can edit your videos right on YouTube using YouTube's video editor that's found on that upload page. Uh, and that's good if you want to you know, maybe chop the, the beginning and the end off of your video or just add a few effects and things like that. And so the YouTube editor that's uh, has some pretty basic functionality and it's free, right? Yeah, it's free and it's you know platform neutral, obviously, since it's online. But you can clip videos or you could um, stitch videos together. If maybe you've got three or four videos that you want to put together, you can add music in the background. You can add some graphics. So there's you know a, a fair amount of uh, effects that you can add to your video from right from the YouTube editor, which is really a good way to start because then you don't have to learn any new software. You don't have to buy iMovie or anything like that. Okay. So as we go a little further into YouTube, you'll find your what's called your video manager. And this is sort of where all your videos live and where you can uh, edit them or take a quick look at them. Uh, so all of my videos, in this case, I've got you know all my videos uploaded here. And I can go to the edit button to edit an individual video. Um, and by edit I, here, I mean you know, change the title of the keywords or things like that. Um, on the right hand side you can see you take a quick look at your stats and see how many views you've got and things like that. Um, so that's just a good place. The video manager, you're going to find all kinds of things there, um, most of which honestly you don't really have to worry about. But it's just a good place where you can kind of see, okay, let me see what I've got up there and how these videos are performing. Or if I need to get to one and maybe add it to a playlist, you can check off a bunch of videos and then just add it to a playlist. So there's a lot of uh, you know mixing and matching that you can do from there, and this is really the, probably the the more important part and the the key part here because when you upload a video to YouTube, you have the opportunity to give it a title, a description, and tags, which are keywords. So when you whenever you upload a video to YouTube, you're going to add a title, a description, and tags. And you want that title. This is really a bad example because this was a Google Hangout. And this is what a Google Hangout looks like when it uploads to YouTube by default. So uh, because this was not a public video, I didn't really bother to you know, spiffy up the title or whatever. But, but generally speaking, you want your title to be descriptive and you want it to include keywords. So had this been a public video, I probably would have had, you know, Lose Labs is a weekly webinar that I do, so I probably would have said, Lose Labs features special SEO guest Patty D'Alessio, or something that's just going to have, you know, SEO in the title and, and other keywords that I want to rank for. Uh, again, you've got a description here, and I'll show you more about that in a moment, but you have a lot of room and a lot of leeway in your description. And then you have tags, which again are the keywords uh, so whatever keywords you're using, in my case it might be video marketing and online video, you want to make sure that you add those to the description. So Lou, on the keywords, um, mm -hmm. by the way, for everybody, who, some people who might not know what those are, th that's the, the terms you type into the search bar either on YouTube or Google to a certain phrase or a group of words or, or a word that you would use to identify a video and stuff and Google and YouTube index your content based on those words, correct? Exactly. So because YouTube is now the second biggest search engine behind Google, a lot of people look for answers or solutions to their problems on YouTube. So just like I go to Google, I'll go to YouTube and go into the search bar and you know maybe if I put you know how to get better search engine optimization or how to get better SEO, uh, if I had titled this correctly, there's a chance that this video would show up under SEO or whatever those keywords may be. So that's why they're important. So, Do you, do you use the keyword planner for your, S, or your uh, keyword research or do you use like a paid service? No, I don't use a paid service but um, you know unfortunately Google took away the, they used to have a really handy keyword tool 
And uh, now, of course, they want you to advertise and they want you to pay for some of those privileges. But um, there are a lot of different keyword tools that you can use to try and figure out you know, what keywords you should be looking for. Um, I always suggest that if somebody's got a business where they're, they're the CEO or they're the, you know, basically the main person in their business, that they use their name as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so I may do, you know, I use Lou Borton as one of my keywords because if somebody doesn't know about a particular video, they may just search under my name and hopefully many of my videos will come up. Right. I think doesn't doesn't Google still have the keyword planner because I use oh, that. Oh, the sometimes. keyword planner. Yep, just not yeah. the you know, the original keyword tool yeah. that they used to use. I like the old one better. <laughs> yeah, the old one was was cool because they really gave you a lot of information, and now some of that information you have to be an advertiser to to access. I see. Okay. Um, but still, I mean, keywords are very important because they just help people find your video. And if your video is solving a problem or answering a question that somebody in your niche has, then there's a chance they'll find it. The other thing you can do here on, on this uh, upload page is you can select a thumbnail. And typically, YouTube gives you three thumbnails to choose from, and they are invariably bad. They're when you're yawning, or your eyes are closed, or you're drooling, <laughs> or you're on camera. So now, you can actually click this custom thumbnail and choose your own image to use as the thumbnail, which is great because I'll show you in a, in a moment how some folks do that. But uh, um, again, a lot of people may choose a video um, based on the thumbnail of the image that they see. So the thumbnails become a lot more important. And now you can upload a custom thumbnail so that you're not stuck with the uh, one of the three that they give you. Any tips on what to put up? Because I know for a while I was putting up kind of our, our, our new wave kind of blue banner, but I was mm -hmm. talking with some people and it's like, well, it doesn't really, it kind of hides everything from the video. So, I mean, is there a yeah. quick tip you could give on how to create one of those? Like, that, yeah, do, you want, do you want it to be you or do you, you want it to be you doing something? Or if, it's, if you're on camera, like in this case where Patty was the expert and she's on camera, um, what I would typically do in something like this is I would create a custom thumbnail that had an overlay that said SEO tips. Okay. Um, so somebody looking at it quickly will know, will see the text that says SEO tips, and they'll know, okay, great, that's, you know, I'm looking for SEO tips. And I'll show you how um, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon does that really effectively uh, in a moment. Um, last thing on this particular slide is that you have the option of making your videos public, private, or unlisted. Um, again, this one's unlisted because in this case, I was just uploading the video from Google Hangouts and it was for you know a, um, a membership club so it wasn't public to the general public but typically you're going to make your videos public if you want people to see them obviously. So uh, a little bit more on uploading your videos um, again when you go to edit that you can always go back and edit your title if you don't like it it's not going to mess up your views or anything so this one was for a webinar that I did a while back and the title of the webinar was Rapid List Building 2.0 Webinar with Lou Borton and Clay Collins. So it's you know, a long, fairly descriptive title. And the description here, um, I didn't go too far into it, but it's always good to start your description with the web page that you want to drive traffic back to. So in this case, it was um, the webinar registration page, and it starts with the HTTP. Um, so that will come up as a live link back to whatever site you set here. So it's always important to have that in your description. Um, if you are using your keywords correctly and consistently, chances are a lot of the related videos that show up are going to be your other videos. So you can see in this case, um, several of the videos on the, on the sidebar are my other videos because I've, I'm always using the same keywords. So, so with keywords, do you want to use the same ones, or is it it's going to be topic based or guest based, right? Based on a name or a topic, usually. Yep, but I'm I'm always going to put you know uh, my name. I'm always going to put my you know um, typical keywords like video marketing in my case. Um, so if you're you know um, whatever keywords you're using, you always want to have those same you know few keywords regardless of what the topic is. The other thing that uh, I do that helps to link it all together. I learned this from another internet marketer, Tom Antion, was I use a uh, nonsense word in my keywords. In, yeah. in my case, I usually use my name backwards. And because it's a nonsense keyword that most other people wouldn't use, like a backwards word, um, YouTube finds them and, and links them together. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, feel free to stop me at any point. Um, otherwise, I'll just kind of continue with the YouTube tour. Uh, once your video is uploaded, uh, you can share your video. And if you click the share this video under the video, then a whole bunch of icons pop up. And you can see uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. It's really easy to share your video from Facebook to other social networks. And I always recommend that people do that because that's you're leveraging your time, you're getting your video in more on more platforms and um, it's very easy to do, you know, with one click you can share. You do have to, at first you have to connect your accounts so that uh, when you share to Facebook it'll know where to go, but once you've done that it's very easy to share. Uh, you will always have your link here that you can also share in email. Um, you've got uh, what they give you is an embed code if you want to put that video on your website or blog as well, which is always a good idea. And you see even in the comments, the links, when you use the HTTP in the full uh, URL, these become links as well. Mm -hmm. um, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Luke, can you uh, talk a little more on keywords? Uh, what about the title? Like I I've been taught that you put it as the first word in the title, first words in the title, and then twice in the title, actually, and then in the first, I think, 100 words or so in the description. Do you have any rules for where to place your keywords? Uh, again, you know, always, like you said, in the title. Uh, if you can have it twice, I mean, I don't think it's, it's you know, it's, uh, I don't try and game the system and, put, you know, stuff it with keywords, but I could do, you know, um, I would do something that said video marketing tips, how to add video to you, you know, to your blog or something like that. So I've got the word video in there a couple of times. Um, a lot of my videos are, are private so that I don't even worry about it, but when your video is public, that's when you want to, um, you know, really get as many keywords in there as possible. Um, and again, I'll show you how uh, The Tonight Show does that in a moment. A um, couple quick things before we leave this slide. Uh, you can and should embed your video into your website or blog. So basically you're using YouTube to host your video for free, but you're also adding that video to your website or blog by taking this embed code that they give you and, and putting that in your blog so that the video will appear there as well. You can also adjust the size um, based on your website. Um, you know, you may want it to be a little bigger, a little smaller. And I usually leave all these other things blank, um, show suggested videos. It's like I don't want to show my competitors' videos, so I'm, I just leave all that stuff blank. Um, popping over to, the, to my favorite example here on The Tonight Show, um, these guys, I know they probably have a whole department that does it, but, but the folks at uh, Jimmy Fallon and The Tonight Show really do YouTube right. Um, now they've only done about, what is it, 120 shows and they've already got like seven or 800 videos uploaded to YouTube. And as you can see in this particular clip, they got uh, almost 3 million views in less than 24 hours. Uh, which rivals the amount of people that actually watch the show. So they're using YouTube really effectively, and they do a lot of things right. Um, now, again, it doesn't say Tonight Show in the title here, but it says, if somebody said, hey, did you see that lip sync battle with Emma Stone last night on Jimmy Fallon? Somebody's going to search lip sync battle with Emma Stone, and that's what's going to come up. So, so their titles are... Um, you know, pretty descriptive on exactly what's happening at that moment in the clip. Um, Robinson Cano has comfort food in Seattle. Jamie Foxx gives a high-powered dance lesson. You know, it pretty much says exactly what it is. And then they go a step further and they take their thumbnail. I know it's difficult to see because it's so small, but you can see where they put on their logo and Jamie Foxx, uh, their logo and Steven Tyler. You know, whoever was in that particular clip, they're creating a custom thumbnail so that, um, you know, wherever that thumbnail appears, somebody can see at a glance, oh, yeah, there's the Jamie Foxx clip. So as far as creating thumbnails, I guess if, if you were didn't have a tool to do that, you could just play the video and then use a free service like Jing or something to, to capture the video at that moment and then upload that as a thumbnail with that? Exactly, yep. So you can take a, a free tool like Jing and pick the, you know, capture the actual image and frame that you want and uh, put some text over it. Um, you can use a tool like um, Canva.com, which right. is a free video, you know, kind of photo editing tool. So the main thing is that you just want to take, you know, find the clip that's representative of that video 
and then just put enough text over it so that again it's not blocking the whole clip here but but you can tell at a glance you know okay here's that clip with um, uh, Jamie Foxx and here's that clip with Robinson Cano how long should the videos be on uh, to, they want to be relatively short right for people to consume mm -hmm. yeah two or three minutes is is the the average um, and again in the Jimmy Fallon example in the Tonight Show I mean obviously these clips are much longer but if you can see here almost every one of them here is under five minutes and most of them are even shorter than that so they're breaking down their their longer segments into um, basically sound bites and clips you know this one's under five minutes this one's 437 420 418 so it seems like they've got kind of almost a mandate to keep it under five minutes and somehow break down those clips into smaller clips so if you have a webinar or if you've done um, some kind of teaching video you might think about breaking that down into uh, smaller bite-sized clips of three to five minutes and you can do that in the YouTube editor right you can cut pieces out for yeah. free right you don't need Camtasia or you know screen flow or something like that no you can go into the YouTube editor and say you know okay here's a, here's a good place to end this clip right at four minutes and eight seconds and you know do, do a little scissor thing in, in YouTube and you're ready to go. Um, the other thing that the Tonight Show does really well is their description. And you can see here, you know, they YouTube gives you a lot of space for a description, and the Tonight Show uses a lot of it. So, again, uh, what they do and what we all should do is if you've got some kind of um, general information or cut and paste kind of info about your company or your business, you can put that in every video. So, what the Tonight Show does is they have basically a line or two about what's in that particular clip so Jimmy and Emma Stone square off in a lip sync battle and Emma Stone shows she's not afraid of lightning fast lyrics so that's the video description the rest of this is all um, standard cut and paste you know it's in every video subscribe to the Tonight Show with a live link um, watch the Tonight Show follow Jimmy on Facebook like you know follow Jimmy on Twitter like Jimmy on Facebook so they've got tons of links in here and all of this is pretty standard, you know, okay, well, the first couple lines are going to be what's in this video. The rest of it's going to be promoting everything else that they do. So this is creating backlinks for their other pages. Is that what it does? Mm-hmm. Right. What about also, creating backlinks for this video? Do you paste the, the YouTube URL at the bottom? Because I've um, been taught that. I don't know that. that they do that. I, I haven't seen The Tonight Show do that. Um, and, again, you can, but, but here I think the, the point is they want to keep people on as yeah. many Tonight Show and NBC properties as possible. And again, the other thing here, because they're using you know keywords and they've got so many videos, you know every video that shows up on the right-hand column is another Jimmy Fallon video. Um, so, and they're from different shows and different you know um, clips. But um, it's pretty clear that once you're on the Tonight Show YouTube page, um, the only place to go is to another Tonight Show video. I do. <laughs> another NBC show so <laughs> I like to use them as an example although I'm sure like I say they may have an entire department that does this but really most of it you know creating a custom thumbnail shouldn't take too long cutting and pasting in a description doesn't take any time you know really it's a matter of thinking up a good descriptive title that's representative of that video and making sure you do it consistently so you don't recommend that people put like keywords like say like go to Google and find out what they auto 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 type for you and copy those keywords and put them in the video description. You don't think that's wise, or does that help your SEO? Yeah, I think uh, you know. I mean, I think I um, it's probably easy for the Tonight Show, but if you have a, a less lesser known brand, you want to get as many keywords in there yeah. as possible. Just give people as many chances to find you as possible. Um, so let me see here. The other thing that's really interesting uh, that I've gotten into a little bit more lately is annotations. And annotations are um, a, a thing that you can add to your video that make them interactive. So they're like overlays or um, thought blooms. Um, so there are, you can add these after the fact. Once your video is created, you can add annotations, which are basically just a way to guide your viewers through the video. Uh, and I, the Tonight Show does this as well. Um, but at, at any point in the video, you can add an annotation in your video. You can do it as, add as many annotations as you want. So basically, you go to your video manager and you find the annotations 
heading here. And annotations can be speech bubbles, notes, titles, spotlights, labels. A lot of these are kind of essentially the same thing. They just look slightly different on here. Uh, and all you have to do is you find the point in your video that you want to add that annotation, and you decide what kind of annotation, and you just add it from here, from add annotation. So if I had, um, I could add a speech bubble here that says, um, you know, visit my website, or for more information, go here. Um, I think I've got a couple of examples here. It says, oh, here's my, my annotation. OMG, I look like <laughs> such a stiff. Um, but here you can add in, you know, I mean, I was just kind of fooling around, but you can add in whatever text you want. Uh, you can make the annotation any length that you want for the whole video. And the best thing of all about annotations is that you can link them. So this, OMG, can link, in this case, to my website. You can also link to another video or to a playlist, to a channel, to a Google Plus profile page. So there are a lot of ways to make your video interactive and kind of help your viewer through the video by adding these guides or these annotations along the way. To get an associated website, you have to, I think, be verified or something like that, right? There's, a, there's an extra step yes, to do that. Yes, there is an extra step, and it, it's gotten easier. I think it used to be, I mean, they used to you know, require that you had a certain amount of views or a certain amount of videos, and I think they've kind of lowered the, the bar for that so that it's not that difficult to have an associated website. And basically, you want this to be your main website. Can you put so a clickable image up there? Um, There's a text only right now. You could. I mean, it's text only right now, but what you could do is put an image, like an overlay in editing, and then put um, what kind of annotation? You do like a spotlight over it. Okay. So basically what you're doing is you're putting a picture, then you're putting an annotation over the picture to make the picture seemingly clickable. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense, yeah. Okay. You just have to use that in like uh, some of your editing first. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So annotations are, are sort of the, a great way, you know, sort of a, a way to make your videos interactive, drive that traffic back to your website. Um, here I've got, you know, just, an, I've, I've got it listed as a note, so it's kind of ghosted out here. I could make this bigger or smaller or move it anywhere on the screen, um, but the point is here, when I link it to my website, I can have, um, when somebody clicks check this out on the video, they will actually be taken to my website. So it's a great way to get people from your YouTube page back to where you want them on your website. I always like to say that, you know, YouTube is great, but you're basically um, renting space from them and it's their real estate and, and they control the environment and the experience. Once you drive people back to your website or blog, that's your real estate and you control the environment or the experience. Make sense? Yep. Yes. Cool. So yeah, I, I just did a zoom on this one where you can see, um, you know, I had it kind of subtle. You can make this much bigger, but the annotation will link back to your site, which is, uh, like I say, a great way to to drive some of that traffic that's coming to YouTube and say, hey guys, come over to my site where where I uh, you know sort of run the show. Uh, if you need to know more about annotations, YouTube has a lovely little uh, <laughs> uh, a whole two or three pages of information about them. But I think it's one of the, the most underutilized tools because it does take a little extra effort and a little extra thought. But if you really want your videos to, um, you know, be, make the best viewer experience and sort of help that viewer um, back to your website, then it's a great way to do it. Another thing, just generally speaking on um, YouTube, is that all, I believe all videos should have a call to action, a specific uh, call to action at the end where you're telling your viewer exactly what you want them to do. So you may say, um, subscribe to my channel at the link above, or visit my website, or buy my whatever, but you really have to tell the viewer what to do, otherwise they're off on some other you know, rabbit hole or, or looking at some other video or off to the next thing. So you really have to be really specific and you have to be disciplined about adding a call to action to all of your videos. Um, one other thing about YouTube before um, I, you know, we get to questions and stuff like that, uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of times people get depressed if they, they upload a video and it only gets 38 views or 146 views and, and people think that they need to have a viral video to be successful and the truth is really you want to just make sure that your video resonates with your target market and that you're giving your 
people an opportunity to see it. So I, I like to say that you know I'd rather have a hundred qualified prospects, you know, entrepreneurs and small businesses watch my video than a thousand teenagers who it just doesn't make any sense to. So think about your target market, think about reaching those folks and take heart in the fact that 53% uh, of videos from YouTube get fewer than 500 views and 30% get less than 100 views and only a third of 1%, 0.33% get more than a million views and that's usually uh, Lady Gaga and Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> right. So don't be uh, disheartened don't. if you're not getting tons and tons of views. If you're getting a thousand views, you are doing amazing on YouTube. Yeah, and uh, Lou, I just uh, you know I was thinking about that too because I know a number of people, including myself, who put up some videos. Maybe there's little views at first, but views are something that you know accumulate over some time. So it's not true. be discouraged that it. It's just an immediate thing that you're getting the viewers, but to be patient. Exactly, and you can always go back and, and I say, you know, breathe new life into old videos by going back and updating a title or, or adding an annotation or just, you know, sort of um, giving it a new spin. So even though you might say, oh, that video only got 130 views, it's like, well, you can, you know, you can al always promote it more and share it to Facebook and share it to Google and maybe folks didn't catch it the first time. Um, sometimes on some of my more evergreen videos, I might post a video three months later and somebody says, oh, that was a really cool new video. I'm like, well, it wasn't new, but I guess it was the first time you saw it. So, it, Isn't it important to constantly tweak some of your keywords and how it might be uh, presenting? I know I've done that with the, I used to make videos in the pain relief niche and I had one video mm -hmm. that was doing okay, but once I optimized it with us for SEO, it was like, poof, now I think it's ranked in the top two videos on Google for a pretty wow. good keyword. So it's getting a, you know, about 4,000 views a month probably now. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah. 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 Cool. So I guess it matters, so, right? That you, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, I put up my, I didn't, I, for some reason the image isn't showing up, but I put up my freebie link here, which I can also put in the text. And if you like, I will um, turn off the screen share and we'll, we can uh, be on screen again and, and um, come back to... Uh, and I can, I can post your link too, Lou. I have it if you'd like. Great. So everybody, I'm going to post Lou's link here. This is a free offer. I don't know. Do you want to say something about it, Lou? Or? Uh, sure. Yeah, I have on, on uh, bestvideotips.com. I did um, an ebook basically, which is 25 really quick and easy video tips, really easy to digest, easy to understand, you know, nice and pretty with lots of pretty pictures. And again, that's one of the things that I like to do is really repurpose content and try and use my uh, information and content in as many forms as possible. So basically what I did was I did a bunch of YouTube tips and I turned it into an ebook. So you can go here to see the, uh, the ebook version of that. Um, and again, I may also take bits and pieces of that and use them as smaller videos or put them on Facebook. Um, the more you can leverage and repurpose your existing material, the better visibility you're going to have. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's one of our, our things that we're doing here. We have a live show, and then this is now a YouTube video that mm -hmm. you can then create a podcast out of, which is what we do. And then if you wanted, you could even get it transcribed and, and have a, an ebook or an informational you know, text product created as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, it's so much work and how do you get all that stuff out there? And, and a lot of it really is just a matter of slicing and dicing your existing content so that you've got a lot of visibility. And, and again, you're giving people different ways to consume it, whether it's an audio podcast or like this on Google Hangouts. And the other nice thing about Google Hangouts is you know, this will go to your Google Plus account and it will go to your YouTube channel. So there's life beyond the original purpose. Absolutely. I I have so many takeaways from what you've been sharing, Lou, but I think the biggest one is thinking about how we can use the night, the uh, um, the late night show strategy, the tonight show strategy of, you know, we have great experts coming to, you know, meet with us, but there are some golden nugget tips being shared in segments of these uh, programs, mm -hmm. and what a great way to have little snippets of those videos and optimize them to get attention to encourage a future audience. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, someone, somebody may not have an opportunity to watch a 45-minute or an hour-long webinar right now, but if you take bits and pieces of that and, uh, you know, take the, uh, the tidbits and, and the good stuff and give it to them in three- to five-minute chunks, then you've got a whole different animal. 
Absolutely. Okay. Well, you guys, let's go ahead and open it up for, for questions there. If you guys have questions for Lou, go ahead and just type them in the chat bar. I think we have a couple that we've had asked, but um, go ahead and just, if anything, it could be about video, it could be about uh, whatever you need from him. Just go ahead and ask away. Don't be shy about well, it. More so than questions, we have people sharing the love. So they're really appreciating the uh, okay. uh, great information that they're getting. And, uh, you know, uh, I know Steve in particular, and especially for showing, I, I think it was very meaningful to show, it would give perspective to the reality of the numbers of views that most videos get. Because <laughs> I, I think it's so easy for those of us that are entrepreneurs that try this to get discouraged and make, you know, because we're, envious of what maybe somebody else is doing, but to see what the reality is, we're probably just in line with all the other folks that are out there, the majority of them. Absolutely. I mean, again, it's it's about your reaching your people, your target market, the folks who you want to resonate with. And, you know, I, I can't compete with Lady Gaga. I might, well, <laughs> no, I can't. Depends on so, what it is, I guess. Yeah, I guess. But, <laughs> but I, I'm not going to get those kind of views. So it's, as long as it's you know my folks are seeing it and I'm giving them an opportunity to see it, then then that's the main thing. Right, right. Any, we got a question, I think, from Steve Michael. Is that? Yeah, yeah. I see that there. So, um, so anyway, some people recommend as a strategy using celebrity names, brands as keywords. I have never done this. I personally feel it would lack integrity for me unless the celeb company was in my video. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I always think, you know, it's like I, I don't want to. I mean, in the time it would take to try and game the system and try and fool YouTube, that you know, you're only going to um, end up end up either pissing off Google or your viewer. Because if if the video said something about Lady Gaga and then they tune in and they find it's a commercial for something else. Uh, on the other hand, if you're clever and if you're fun and if you're doing something like a parody of Lady Gaga, that's a good way to actually, um, you know, kind of ride the coattails of a more popular subject. So. Um, you know, if you say, oh my gosh, somebody stole my vi my videos on the iCloud and now they're on YouTube, I mean, that's just kind of a fun way to play off what's happening in the news. Um, so certainly you could use, you know, keywords like that that aren't misleading. But I think if they don't ha really have anything to do, do with your video, you're just going to kind of, you know, piss off your viewer and they probably won't come back. And that could go to also jumping on current events and stuff like that, right? Shooting a quick video that ties into, like, the ice bucket challenge or something like that. It was just like sweeping the nation, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, if you know, that's probably a good keyword to have right about now, uh, <laughs> ice bucket challenge. Right, right. So, yeah. So, uh, Gerd asks um, Is YouTube worldwide exposure or is it possible to only reach a state? Ooh, it's worldwide. It's out there when you put it out there. Now, you can um, make it unlisted so that only certain people have access to it. If you give them the link, they'll have access. And with YouTube advertising, I'm sure you can target by country or zip code, but but just putting a regular public video on YouTube is going to put it out there uh, pretty much for all the world to see. Uh, you can actually um, schedule videos, so you can have a video um, come up at a certain time, like you can with blog posts, or you can, a lot of times what I do is just make it unlisted, which means you know, nobody can really find it unless I give them the link. They probably won't stumble upon it. So you can't, um, you can't target a state, I guess is what he's asking, maybe, with a, a public video. You, it's, once you put it public, it's out there. Yeah, I think you'd only be able to do that with YouTube advertising. Yeah. How is YouTube advertising? Are you, are you using that much? I've never used it. I that. haven't yet. But I think it's still kind of, um, you know, uh, unexplored territory. But I know, like Facebook advertising... Um, you know, it's it's really and it's still in its infancy and and very affordable. So it's if you want to experiment with it, it's a good time to do it. I just haven't done a lot of it myself. I just haven't had had an opportunity to do so yet. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what brand it was that was using all of their ad money was on YouTube and they were crushing it by making wow. all these like little videos. Uh, I can't remember the brand now, but it was uh, yeah. They were interviewed about that and they spent like ninety five percent of their budget on YouTube ads and they were getting I think for every dollar they spent they were getting a dollar sixty wow. back. So they were getting a sixty percent, you know, margin there on their money. So it was like Yeah, well, and if they you must have got it figured out. If you do it right and again, you know, this you, a lot of people would think, you know, it wasn't that long ago where the perception of YouTube was, oh, it's all, you know, music videos and skateboarding cats. It's like, well, you know, <laughs> the vast majority of the major brands are advertising on YouTube or starting to advertise on YouTube. So, you know, you just have to look at uh, 
um, any of the big brands, you know, it's it, car commercials. I mean, look at all the, especially with the advertising, the kinds of things that come up on your videos before the video plays if the videos are ad optimized. Right. We do have a question from Peggy Lee, and um, she wanted some clarification about. Could you talk again about the backward spelling of, like you would give in the example of your mm -hmm. name? What's the significance or benefit of that strategy? Right. The uh, I call it the you know the um, nonsense keyword trick. So basically, what you do is you take a keyword that nobody else is going to use, or that would be very unlikely. I mean, my name spelled backwards. That's not a keyword for, for anything. So essentially, what it does is it links your videos together with that unique keyword, so that when the related videos come up on the side, in many cases, those will be yours rather than a competitor's. Right. It helps push out all the others, all the other videos, right? You want your other videos showing up alongside the current one. That right. Them together. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Lou, have you heard? Um, have you heard that Google Hangouts, in particular, give extra SEO juice for uh, Google rankings versus just doing a standard YouTube video? Uh, I have, but I don't really have any uh, anything concrete to prove it, other than you know that's what folks tell me and. Um, it certainly doesn't hurt. I mean, obviously, Google's going to give priority to their own properties, and they really want Google Hangouts and Google Plus to work. So uh, it, it doesn't hurt to have that on there. And that's the other thing. When you when you do a Google Hangout, you also have to be careful about how you title that, because if you just put, you know, my groovy Hangout, that's not going to be uh, a very effective keyword. Right. But you can change that later, right? Yep. Yeah. So, all right. We got another question, Michael. Sure. Um, Greg asks, how can I make a great weekly video on motivational speaking so I may help others achieve their dreams? Do you have any tips? Ah, yes. Good question. My tip would be, because it's sometimes a pain in the butt to do video, is when you get your setup, which in many cases can really just be you in front of the computer. Don't make it any more complicated than it needs to be. I mean, I just have a you know white paper tape behind me because I had a green screen there and I wanted to cover it. Uh, once you find your, your video spot where you're going to shoot your videos, uh, do as many as you can, like on a you know Sunday afternoon, do 5, 10, 15 of them, and you'll have them done for the month or the two months, and you can kind of drip them out when you want. So I would suggest if you're going to do a weekly video, um, you know, maybe Monday or Tuesday is your video day, and you do a handful of them so that you don't have to constantly do new ones. So batch them together, uh, keep them relatively short, and then uh, drip them out, you know, once, twice a week, however, however, on whatever schedule you like. Perfect. What uh, what equipment do you recommend a beginner start with? I mean, do they need, you know, a big fancy, you know, camera, or can they just start with an iPhone? What do you recommend? <laughs> yeah, I do. I use my iPhone most of the time, um, and that's the thing. You know, a lot of folks get hung up with with technology and they say I'm not going to do video until I have a good camera or until I figure out this this or that and I always say you know it's really goals over gadgets and it's really a matter of knowing what you want to do if you can accomplish that with a smartphone or a webcam or an iPad then that's all you need I mean I, I traded in all my big heavy gear for my iPhone and my iPad and and um, that's what I use 90 percent of the time what about audio quality do you recommend a wireless mic um, if you're going to be any further than two or three feet away from your webcam or your uh, iPhone, especially a lot of folks, you know, will do an iPhone video and the person's across the room, and that's when the the audio starts to degrade. Um, and I know, especially if you're doing a regular show like this or a podcast, it's good to have a microphone like you have, or I have a blue snowball mic. Um, it's called a snowball because it looks like a snowball. There it is. I have that one too. I was trying to show you, but it's blocked behind. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that. <laughs> and this that's just a USB microphone that plugs into your computer, whether it's Mac or PC, and and uh, that's all you need. You really don't need a lot of expensive equipment to to create video. I mean, a lot of folks are using iPhones and iPads. I, I mentioned earlier, I think I don't know who it was that was doing a lot of YouTube advertising, but we're seeing folks now that are producing commercials on an iPad. I mean, TV broadcast commercials. So. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about uh, lighting tips? Uh, if you're lighting, it's usually a good idea to make sure that all the light's coming from in front of you. So in this case, I just have um, two what's called softbox lights, and I got a whole like uh, lighting kit on Amazon.com 
for under $150. I think it was from, from Cowboy Lighting, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But you can go on Amazon and search, you know, um, video lighting kits or video light kits. And for not a lot of money, you can get um, some nice lights that, you know, they're not hot. They're called soft boxes. They're sort of fluorescent light. And as long as you've got, you know, you're adequately lit from the front, you should have no problem. I use natural daylight most of the time when it's daytime. Um, the only mistake folks sometimes make is they say, oh, you know, I have this beautiful skyline or this beautiful whatever behind me in this open window. And <laughs> they shoot on an open window. If the light's coming in from behind them, then, you know, they can not look so good. You want the light source to be in front of you. Right. Yeah, they're going to be dark then if it's behind them. So. Mm -hmm. Um, any any positioning tips? I know I set mine up. I'm just curious for myself here. Um, I have mine at 45 degrees an degree angles, pointing right at me. Is that mm -hmm. the, a better the better setup, or what do you what do you recommend there? Yeah, that sounds good. In, in TV, they use something called three point lighting, and, and yeah. typically it's three lights, and you have a, a key light, which is sort of the main light that's right in front of you, uh, a fill light, which is to get any uh, harsh shadows that may be coming and a backlight, which is really just to provide some perspective between you and what's behind you. Um, for video, you know, it's like I don't even bother with the three-point lighting. For, for, for web video, I've just got the two soft lights like you do probably in front yeah. of me sort of from 45-degree angles. Yeah, I don't have a boom or anything over my head, or mm -hmm. I just do the two the two main lights, 45, right at you. It seems to be fine, I guess. It look, you know, so good stuff. Yeah. Um, any other questions we see, Michael? I don't. I don't. I think we've done a great job with the questions. If there's any last-minute questions, feel free to uh, type them in. This has uh, been really, really helpful. I've got lots of great notes myself, Lou. So, excellent. Lots of great, lots of great things. Yeah, I think the main thing is just for people to, you know, kind of get started with it, and you know, it may be a little intimidating, but I think once you kind of get the video bug. Um, it's really a great way to communicate with your audience. It's a great way to share information. And the other thing that I think a lot of people forget is it doesn't always mean you have to be on camera because you can do videos that are PowerPoints, like earlier when I was showing my slides. Um, I've done whole Google Hangouts where, um, you know, basically in my pajamas where I've just shared my screen and I never appeared on camera and I'm just sharing information on slides. So video doesn't have to be on camera. It's really any way that you're visually communicating your message. All right. What are some of the essential equipment you need to get started, and how much does that cost? I mean, you mentioned your mm -hmm. iPhone. Is that really all it takes to get started? Do you need a stand? Do you need an adapter mm -hmm. for that? Like, how does that work? If I was just starting today, I would just really honestly just buy an iPad. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, you've got the camera. The iPad has iMovie on it for editing. It has teleprompter apps. And the only additional thing I would probably get, um, aside from an iPad, is a stand or a tripod for that to keep it steady and a lavalier microphone so that if it was too far away, you can actually connect your, a microphone like a lav mic to your iPhone or iPad or any smartphone, really. Um, and the one that I have, I think, was you know like $20 on Amazon or something. So again, it's not a matter of spending the most money. It's just deciding what kind of video do I need to create and what's the least amount of aggravation and equipment that I can do that with. Right. Um, and in my case, you know, or your, or your case because you're doing kind of a regular show, um, you've got your lights, I'm using your Mac, you're probably using your computer and your webcam um, as your camera, uh, and uh, you're close enough to my blue snowball mic here where the sound is okay, or in your case, you've got your mic right there. Absolutely, yeah. I think there's an adapter, right, for the stands. I used to use what's called a Glyph mm -hmm. to hold my uh, iPhone 4 and put that on the stand. Yeah, so. um, and... Uh, there's something for the iPad called Caddy Buddy, which is, I think, C-A-D-D-I-E-B-U-D-D-Y. And it's basically just, um, I wish I had it with me, but it's over. Um, it's basically just an adapter that will hold your iPad or your iPhone or really whatever tablet. You know, you have to get the specific one for the specific device that you have. But it will hold it steady uh, while you're shooting. And that's, a, you know, that's a, another kind of newbie mistake is somebody says, I'm going to shoot this video with my iPhone and it's a little shaky and <laughs> you know, it's, uh, the video looks like you're um, in the midst of an earthquake or something. That's what I used to do, man. I used to have my girlfriend point her iPhone 4 at me and it was like this. Actually, yeah. my best video was that. <laughs> yeah. I got more views than anything. Mm -hmm. you know, like 60,000 views or something on this little shaky iPhone. Wow. And that's the thing. Again, you know, you, it's funny because you say, why would anybody you know, watch this? Oh, that video quality wasn't that great. It's really about the content. Yeah. Um, if you've got the content that somebody wa wants to 
watch that answers a question for them or solves a problem for them, they'll put up with a yeah. little shakiness or a little bad lighting or something. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, Michael, what do you think? Well, I see another question that just came in from Barb. I'm not sure I'm completely following it, but she says using iPad is counter to your um, recommendation. recommendation about having the computer wired on Hangout. Thoughts on that? Um, I don't know if I'd do a Hangout on an iPad or not. Um, I mean, most of the time I use my, my I have a Mac, so I use the, the computer, the webcam that's on the Mac, it's right up there. Um, the hardest part is remembering to look at the camera instead of looking down at the screen where the folks are. But So I use, when I'm stationary and I'm home, I use my computer and my webcam, and when I'm on the road or on the go, I use my iPad or iPhone. I haven't gotcha. tried a Google Hangout from the iPad yet, I don't think, but I as long as you have an internet connection, I don't see why you couldn't do it that way as well. Right. All right. Perfect. Yep. And Stephen asks, um, is the lav mic wireless? I want to do movement demos while I'm on the floor. Do you have thoughts? Um, you could get a wireless. They're um, a bit more expensive, but obviously you'll have a lot more flexibility. You know, if you've got um, a lav mic, like in this case, I'm using my headset, so, you know, um, I'm tethered to the computer. Um, Wireless mics are great. They are more expensive and more professional, but if you're doing yoga or demonstrations or something like that, you might want the flexibility that comes along with it. That's Absolutely. Great. All right. And uh, for... again, you can grab Lou's freebie at bestvideotips.com, bestvideotips.com. So uh, this has been great. And John? All right. Sounds good. We'll we add that up there. So, all right. I think that's it for now, guys. If you except if you, if you for one thing, of, one more thing here that I think Michael was going to touch on. Yes, I have one more thing because as it, it was great that we got that question about uh, iPads and Hangouts and all of that. This is actually episode six of Health GMs, and again, we're very grateful to have Lou join us tonight. And so, John and I have now done six shows, and I uh, just want to share that Google Hangouts on air, live Hangouts has been instrumental in us developing relationships with each and every one of you that are getting to know us. And we've been building our subscriber list. Uh, we're getting, I, I think, developing relationships to build some raving fans and followers. This technology is so important. And we want those of us that, those of you that are following us to start doing the same thing, which is why next week, one week from tonight, instead of a Health GMs episode, we're going to have a special free webinar just for you. And John is actually going to post the link right into the chat. But our webinar is going to be on how you can quickly launch Hangouts on Air yourself, look like a pro with all the appropriate equipment, and add hundreds of prospects to your business, even if you have no prior experience with the technology. John and I are aware that there are so many people out there that want to use Google Hangouts on Air. Maybe some of you even purchased Webinar Jam, which is kind of the app for Hangouts on steroids, which is what we're using to provide this webinar tonight. And it's time that you actually take it to action. And uh, we uh, have been studying it. We've taken it to action. We're having a lot of fun along the way. And we want the same for you. So I'm hoping that you may consider coming back next week and registering for the webinar. We're going to make it fun and entertaining and do a lot of teaching in the process and uh, just have an overall blast so we can be of greatest possible service to you. So I want to thank you again for joining us tonight at Health GMs, and I'll turn it back over to John. Sounds good. All right, yeah, and this, this is going to be a deep dive into the technical aspects of setting it up. One of the things we always hear that people are scared about what to use, what mic to use, how to set it up correctly. We're going to be doing a deep dive into those topics here on this live free training. So if that sounds like you, if you're a little nervous about getting started using live Hangouts to build your email list and attract raving fans to your business, then this is going to be an excellent uh, discussion for you. So, And we'll also have an awesome announcement on that uh, a webinar as well. So the link is in the in the chat bar. If you guys are interested, I'd grab it, sign up. There will be a replay for those who can't make it, but um, hopefully you can come live because that'll be real, where the real magic will be. So uh, I think that's it. You got, Lou, you got anything else or? No, go forth and make video and go to that web. Go to your webinar next week because yeah. Google Hangouts is not going away. It is a great way, uh, even to do whether one-on-one -on -one coaching, conference calls. I mean, it's just it's a, a tremendous platform that I think is going to get more and more popular. Yeah. It's going to blow up these next couple of years, huh? So it already is. All right, everybody. Well, we'll click on that link, sign up. We'll see you next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and 
that's it for now. Oh, one more thing, Lou. Lou, are you going to make a PDF of these uh, slides? Sure, I can send that to you, and you can post it for your gang. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll put it on the replay page. And I just want to make sure for those that watch the replay that cannot see this link, you can register for the free webinar at at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, slash Hangouts Mastery. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Hangouts Mastery. So again, there there will be uh, emails that sent out with some announcements too, but jump and get registered. We already have a bunch of people joining us, and we're going to have a blast next week. And Lou, thanks so much again for being on this show tonight. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. All right. And it looked like it looked like Stephen was looking to get Lou's freebie there. Um, I'll go ahead and post that once we're off the air. I think people can still get these yeah. once we're off the air. So, um, All right, everybody, click that link, and then we'll uh, see you on the next one.